Good afternoon and good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tanis Glenn, and I am the Sales Support Specialist at Aspira Retirement Living. The team members I support are responsible for helping seniors make the important decision to enter the next stage of life, one we hope will start at Aspira Retirement Living. To take you through the, this presentation today, I am pleased to introduce you to Tammy Post. Tammy has worked in the senior living and care sector for her entire career of over 35 years. Realizing the need for self-care and wellness, she turned to nature. This passion led her to, to the science of mindfulness and nature. She became certified as a guide and has been supporting seniors and staff for five years with this practice, developing in-person and virtual experiences. She hosts day retreats on her 400 acre property located in Ontario in the Canadian Shield region. She also films and photographs guided nature walks as she wanders the forest, fields and waters. Participants find that they feel connected, refreshed, creative, less anxious and have better sleep after spending time in nature with Tammy. Also joining us today is Jocelyn Wigginton, resident engagement partner for a retirement division at Aspira. She oversees resident programs and related services. Her passionate team is dedicated to creating vibrant communities where residents have choices and can stay active and engaged at all stages of life. Now onto the fun part. When temperatures drop and snow blankets the ground, we tend to gravitate towards the warmth and coziness of the indoors. Rather than just getting through the winter, we can embrace it and thrive in the physical and emotional relief it offers. Together, let's explore the concept of wintering by learning from the wisdom, wisdom found in the forest and six key factors that can help us make the most of this time of year. Afterwards, we welcome you, we welcome you to join us on a 15 minute virtual wander through the forest during this magical season. As we move through the presentation today, please feel free to pop any questions you have into the chat. We look forward to hearing your questions and comments. Now over to you, Tammy. Thank you very much. I open today with the quote from Catherine May, the author of her book, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat. I recognize winter. I saw it coming and I looked at it in the eye. I greeted it and then I let it in. I had some tricks up my sleeve, you see. I learned them from, I learned them the hard way. When I start feeling the drag of winter, I began to treat myself like a favored child with kindness and love. I assumed my needs were reasonable and that my feelings were signals of something important. I kept myself well fed and made sure I was getting enough sleep. I took myself for walks in the fresh air and spent time doing things that soothed me. I asked myself, what is this winter all about? What change is coming? My name is Tammy and I'm a certified nature therapy guide. I've spent my career working in the senior living sector as, as Tannis was telling you, and I have a background in social work. Today, I will share some insights into the concept of wintering. Snowy Canada allows us to get the full impact of winter. Cold, crisp mornings, crunchy snow, white laden tree branches, quiet landscapes, long nights, frosty designs on windows, fresh air, bright sunshine, blue reflections, vast tidy fields, chickadees singing out melodies, then the song of the ice on the lake and a longing for a cozy place to dwell. The natural world slows its pace and slips into a state of hibernation. It feels like a pause. Apparently, most Canadians only tolerate winter with less than five of us claiming it as their favorite season. Still, we pride ourselves in the notion of having four distinct seasons and we are hardy for weathering our winters. What is this season all about? Let's explore the concept of wintering. We will take some lessons from a culture that has been flourishing in the northern climate for centuries upon centuries. They have adapted to the cold, the isolating days and the long nights, 
and have found a way to celebrate and nourish their body, mind, and spirit. We will also share a few reflective winter theme quotes from philosophers and poets before we take our virtual walk in the winter wonderland of Ontario, Canada. I have a favorite author, William Bridges. He has crafted a book entitled Transitions, Making Sense of Life's Changes. Mr. Bridges explains that we have opportunity to embrace the seasons and changes in our lives with an attitude that encourages us to feel good about each stage of transition. He believes that instead of labeling stages in our lives as beginning, middle, and end, we should approach change in this way, ending what currently is, the neutral zone, and then a new beginning. Maybe winter is our neutral zone. It's a seedbed for new beginnings. If we were to consider winter as our neutral season, it would represent a time where the old is gone, the active, busy time of previous summer and autumn, and the new has not yet arrived, which is spring and summer of a new sort of busyness. I'm not suggesting that winter is the only season for a neutral zone, but it is a perfect time for reflection and rejuvenation. I am certain that you can relate to this. Think of a time that you may have given up something to face a new beginning. Maybe the end of school and a new career, or the end of living debt-free to take on a new investment, such as education, a car, or a home. The end of single life to become romantically attached to someone special. Or the end of a good night's sleep to raise a child. These new beginnings were exciting, scary, challenging, and full of wonderful experiences. How much time did you spend figuring stuff out, finding purpose, picturing the possibilities, planning your next steps, and then deciding on what part you play in the new beginning. Wintering is important. During the winter, nature is doing the exact same thing. So here's an example. The trees are shifting their energy from their leaves and their branches and their outer being to concentrate on their inner being, such as their roots in the dark, fertile soil. They are preparing themselves for their productive season ahead. They're preparing for a new beginning. Spring is just around the corner. What lessons can we take from this natural state of being? How can we slow down and allow ourselves space and time to recoup and gather strength, courage, and ambition to move forward? There are many cultures that endure long, hard, dark, cold winters, and we are amongst this group. The Danish have developed a beautiful way of handling this time of year. There isn't a perfect... My best effort would be to say that it includes the concepts of coziness, contentment, and well-being. Essentially, it encourages you to steadfastly believe that life is good, and it's meant to be enjoyed. So, what steps can we take as we winter? By the way, the Danes are ranked one of the happiest cultures on earth. Let's learn a little bit about their secrets. Making your home, home sweet home. We have an attachment to our home. Wherever you choose to live, Make it feel like home. Here's some tips for winter, for winter living. Fill your space with light, a flickering candle, glow of a fireplace, a favorite lamp, natural light from opening your drapes. Allow the dull days to be brightened. I recently purchased a lamp that's in the same shape as a seashell. It has a bit of a yellow orange glow and it reminds me of vacation sunsets and it just makes my spirits lift. 
I often use essential oils or scented candles that remind me of the walks in the woods. Their citrusy notes are delightful. Add some joy. Rotate out your books and knickknacks to uplifting elements. I have a pair of ceramic birds that I move to my coffee table in the winter to cheer me. My, a friend of mine changes out her wall hangings to brighter, more sun-filled scenes during the winter. I just bought the coziest blankets for my family. It makes our daily ritual of morning coffee and bird feeder watching a soothing event. Music can also impact our mood, tremendously so. I've just discovered all the channels online that, are, that have incredible background sounds for my day. I tune into YouTube and find a playlist that's easy to listen to, and I find myself humming along. What about you? Why don't you pull out some of those old albums? What makes home feel like home for you? Get outside often. You knew I was going to say that. There is a special scent of a cold, wintry day. It seems fresh like a mountaintop. Crack open a window and let it in. If you're able, take a walk. Sit and bask in the winter sun and breathe it in. Whether you are in it or looking at it through your window, nature is truly good for you. Dedicating time to connect with the natural world is a basic human need. The benefits include reduced stress and anxiety, improved concentration and creativity, a boosted immune system, increased feelings of comfort and pain relief, decreased blood pressure, and overall better mood and restful sleep. I usually bundle up and sit outside in the afternoon to watch the sun as it starts to set. Pure joy. Sometimes we're good at cluttering our lives with a lot of unnecessary stuff and we forget to pause and notice and enjoy the simple things. Cherish the simple things. My favorite winter soup is homemade no chicken noodle. I've learned how to add herbs from my summer garden and dumplings. Now it has a special magic that reminds me of my childhood. It makes ordinary days special. In the morning, I always pause to relish the first sip of my morning latte and take in the welcoming scent of the cinnamon that I sprinkle on it. Maybe enjoy a long, relaxing hot shower. I have recently discovered shower steamers that release, release an aerotherapeutic, no, that's not how you say it, aromatherapeutic essence of my favorite essential oil. I love the eucalyptus mint scent, so invigorating. Afterwards, I don my fuzzy robe and I take a few minutes to luxuriate on the couch with an interesting book. Spending time with others should always be a priority, not only for yourself, but for those you care for. Socializing is a crucial component of well-being. We are social beings, and togetherness is vital. Daily texts, Sunday dinners, weekly phone chats, social events, or whatever suits your schedule, work to squeeze it in. It will add years to your life and life to your years. Be intentional with what you do. No matter how old we are, there is always room for growth. Being intentional can deepen our relationship with ourselves as we are practical with our time. One can find contentment in this way. It is easy to time waste in today's digital age. Endless scrolling or binge watching Netflix can be addictive and undermine our well being. Find time to grow. Learn about something new. Create a new habit or develop a skill. Reconnect with past passion. Read a book. Listen to a podcast. Try a new recipe. Take a class. 
If you don't already, try practicing mindfulness by intentionally focusing on the present moment. I find that paying attention to the natural world makes mindfulness easy. Watching the clouds float by, or the birds at the feeder, or the slow flutter of a snowflake, the taste of a berry, the scent of air, or the sound of the wind. Learning to pay attention to the present moment is an essential and rewarding life skill. Take rest and relaxation seriously. Sometimes the busyness of other seasons can be overwhelming. Remembering to take time to recoup. It's a pretty normal thing to do this time of year. Winter is meant for renewal. Allow your body to send signals about what it needs. And try to relax. I recently learned about yoga nidra. It has many benefits that have been scientifically proven. I love it so much that I'm taking a course to become certified. It's a form of yoga that's been around for more than a thousand years and is designed to support stillness and restoration. You simply lie down and allow a guide's voice to take you through a relaxation exercise to help you let go and rest. It's quite magical. I usually get my coziest blanket lie in a comfortable place and close my eyes. The practice that I'm learning incorporates nature sounds and themes that are easily relatable and simple to follow. It clears my mind. I highly recommend that you give it a try. If I was to use one word to describe the experience, I would say tranquil. Prioritize your health. As winter approaches, we often ensure that we are up to date with our cold and flu vaccines and take precautions that help us to avoid getting sick. In addition to the medicine we have available to us, here are some ideas that are just as important. I know that I've already mentioned this, but here I go again. Breathe fresh air. Open your windows and flush the stale air out. Get, ex get outside when you can to fill your lungs with cleansing deep breaths. Drink lots of water and quenching fluids. Water helps to eliminate waste and toxins from your body by encouraging healthy digestion and transporting nutrients to where they are needed. Stay hydrated. Hydration is important for the air you breathe as well. Avoid drying out your sinuses and nasal passages as dryness can allow infections to set in. As I prepared for our chat today, I sat my diffuser on my desk and added some orange blossom essential oil to it. It's divine. Eat until you're full. We are often tempted to clean our plates, even when it's simply too much food. Try eating mindfully. Savor each bite. Notice the flavors and stop when, you've ha when you have enough to satisfy your body. Winter can tempt us to overeat. Be careful not to get sucked into mindless eating cycles. Move. Movement can help your lungs, bowels, brain, muscles, and many other parts of your body. Be sure to get up every hour or so and move around. Participate in group activities when you can. Just don't sit for too long. It's just brutal to get into this sort of habit. Find a sunny spot. Each day, be sure to take in the sun for a bit when the skies are blue. This has been proven to be good for your spirits. Sleep is good medicine. I have a nighttime ritual that prepares me for a restful sleep. What is yours? Mine includes a warm wash of my face, a soothing scented moisturizer on my hands and feet, a small glass of water, a sniff of air from the doorway, and a good scrub of my teeth. Rituals like these can help the body and the mind relax and prepare for sleep. Sleep strengthens our immune system. Be sensitive to all that is happening. I love winter. 
let's cherish and reflect upon some of the ideas shared here today. Embrace cozy, comfortable, warm, fresh, soothing, beauty, contentment, peace, joy, harmony, togetherness, home, health, love, light, gratitude, calm, serenity, simplicity. As the season's tradition, or sorry, transition, be mindful of the good that is held for you in each passing month. Let us consider the wintry words of a few philosophers, poets, and thought leaders. Winter is the time for comfort, for good food and warmth, for touch of a friendly hand, and for a talk beside the fire. It is time for home. There is no winter without snow, no spring without sunshine, and no happiness without companions. What good is the warmth of summer without the cold of winter to give it sweetness? I wonder if the snow loves the trees and fields that it kisses them so gently, and then it covers them up snug, you know, with a white quilt, and perhaps it says, go to sleep, darlings, till the summer comes again. To appreciate the beauty of a snowflake, it is necessary to stand out in the cold. No winter lasts forever. No spring skips its turn. Winter forms our character and brings out our best. Let us love winter, for it is the spring of genius. Advice is like snow. The softer it falls, the longer it dwells upon, and the deeper it sinks into the mind. If we're always racing to the next moment, what happens to the ones we're in? What senses are alivened by, by this time of year for you? In a moment, we'll take a 15-minute stroll through a wintry forest. Does anyone have any questions for me? Dennis, do you see any questions in the mail? No? Nope, not so far. No? Okay. So if you do, just, just um, put them in the chat box. I'm going to introduce you to Jocelyn. Thank you, Tammy. Now I feel so inspired to appreciate the rest of the winter season. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jocelyn, and I am one of the regional resident engagement partners with Aspira Retirement Living. I am thrilled to be here with you today as we delve into the world of holistic wellness through our Explore by Aspira program. At Aspira, we believe in addressing every aspect of well being, which is why we are proud members of the International Council on Active Aging. Their recommendations guide our approach to wellness, ensuring that we offer comprehensive programs that cater to all dimensions of wellness. Next slide, please, Tammy. Thank you. The Explore by Aspira program is designed to encompass all of the International Council on Active Aging's domains of wellness, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, environmental, social, and vocational. Today, I want to focus on the environmental wellness aspect, which is particularly relevant as we embark on a virtual nature walk experience. Next slide, please. Our environmental wellness program offer, re offer residents a variety of engaging activities from gardening clubs and pet therapy to scenic drives and nature walks. These activities are not just about enjoying nature, they're about fostering a deep connection with the environment and reaping the benefits of spending time outdoors. 
One of the key features of our program is its flexibility and personalization. Our monthly calendars are filled with activities, but we also encourage residents to suggest new activities that align with their interests. Our resident engagement specialists are here to make those ideas a reality, ensuring that each resident's experience is tailored to their unique preferences. As we continue to embrace the benefits of spending time in nature, we invite you to imagine the possibilities of incorporating these experiences into your daily life. Whether it's joining a walking group to take in the local landscapes or growing herbs, fruits, and vegetables that, that can be used by our cooks in our tasty cuisine, there are countless ways to integrate nature into your routine and enhance your overall well being. At a Spear of Retirement Living, we believe in the power of choice and personalization. We are committed to ensuring that your journey towards holistic wellness is uniquely yours, and we are here to support you every step of the way. In addition to our environmental wellness programs, Explore by Aspira offers a, a wide range of activities and classes to promote holistic well-being. From yoga and meditation to art therapy and cultural outings, there is something for everyone to enjoy. We also understand the importance of social connection in overall wellness. Our social activities are designed to foster a sense of community and belonging. Whether it's a morning coffee social, a book club, or a games night, residents have plenty of opportunities to connect with um, one another and build meaningful relationships. Furthermore, our vocational programs are designed to help residents explore new interests and skills. From computer classes and woodworking workshops, there are plenty of opportunities to learn and grow. Thank you for allowing me to share a glimpse into our Explore by Aspira program today. I hope you feel inspired to explore new ways of incorporating nature into your life and experiencing the transformative power of holistic wellness. Back to you, Tammy. Thank you very much, Jocelyn. I can relate to all of those elements. So beautiful. So I'm going to pass the, um, the screen share over and we will get started on our virtual walk. Enjoy. Okay, I'll share it with all of you.
That was beautiful. Thank you. Stop the sharing. You do have a question. Okay. Uh, she love wanted to know where was all of this recorded. If anybody else has any questions, please just pop them into the chat and we're going to get Tammy to answer that question for you. We have a 400 acre farm that is pretty much all natural habitat um, with the exception of maybe five acres that is close to, um, I'll say about an hour and a half wet directly west of Ottawa. So we're it's kind of in the middle of nowhere in a way, but um, we have the advantage of enjoying all four of the seasons and as they as they transition into each other. Wow, it's certainly a beautiful area that you live in. Thank you. Very blessed. If I don't think I see any more questions. I see a lot of uh, talk about what is the favorite seasons and we have winter and we have spring and I also really love spring. Um, I love how everything starts new and fresh and starts to come back to life again. But other than that, one second here. No, somebody just said thank you. It's really worth revisiting Annabelle. She's looking forward to the recording that they're going to get after this. So on that note, thank, you, thank you so much, Tammy. Like, thank you so much, Jocelyn and Tammy, for this. It was such a wonderful and relaxing hour to have. And I've learned a lot. Take care.